Even before the dawn of recorded history, man marked his place on the figurative road of progress by his speed on the actual roads of his own making, handicapped by his lack of size and strength in comparison with the primeval beasts against which he battled for existence, he was forced to use his brain to survive. Thousands, perhaps millions of years of this struggle fanned the tiny flame of his intelligence before it blazed into the greatest invention of all time, the first crude wheel. The way was open. Man, for the first time, was free from the limitations of his legs, free to travel centuries later to the lands of his own choosing. Then, almost in the span of a single lifetime, distance surrendered to speed, that advanced god of our machine age civilization. The train, the automobile, the airplane, and now all three together are opening a new chapter in transportation, perhaps the prologue to a better world for all of us in which to live. And the watchwords are farther, faster, safer. No, lady, they didn't deliver this tractor on a truck because it wouldn't run. It'll run all right, and how? Just to prove that this modern Dobbin can gallop along, Ab Jenkins, world-famed speed demon, fills her up with lubricating oil preparatory to putting the old girl through her paces. So long, Ab. Keep her headed for the barn. The steel steed is off at a mere trot of 40 miles an hour. Now it's 45, 50, 55, 60. Hold down there or she'll run away with you yet. Faster and faster, Ab whips her along. Now it's 65 miles an hour for a new world's record with a tractor. Congratulations, say the mayor and chief of police who seem to have overlooked the law violation. I'll bet they never saw a farmer go to town as fast as that before. And just to prove that Ab did travel 65 miles an hour, this AAA official checked the run. But Ab has made other official runs at over twice the speed he attained on the tractor. In 1933, he drove a special Pierce Arrow over the salt beds of Utah for 24 hours at an average of 117 miles an hour to establish 66 records. Now he's back again to gain more records. And Ab knows that in a run like this, oil plays an important part. Proper lubrication marks the difference between success and failure. Every moving part must be thoroughly protected by a thin film of oil. Here's Ted Allen, 3A representative. This is the second time that we've been out here with Ab since record runs. The officials of the American Automobile Association have been here about a week making their preparations. We have the latest type of timing equipment to make everything just the best possible. Ab's been working hard, his mechanics been working hard, have the car in good shape and everything looks fine. We expect to do about 130 to 31 miles an hour. If we're successful, that'll give Ab all the American records for the distances that he runs as well as the international and the world's records. Art Pillsbury, Dean of Racing Timers, who clocked the run. Well, Ab, you're starting on a long journey. I'm sure that you'll stand up under it, and I'm sure the car and every other part will stand up under it. Now, we're going to give you a board and keep you posted all the time as you go along. And if you want anything from us, you write us a note, and we'll help you out. Everything is in readiness. Ab is at the starting line, a little nervous, and who wouldn't be? Away he goes. Off like a silvery bullet. 100, 120, 140 miles an hour around that 10-mile oval. Nerves are forgotten, for when that champion of speed is driving over 100 miles an hour, he has no nerves. Ab knows how many revolutions the engine's turning up, but the speed in miles is calculated by an intricate timing mechanism. A light beam falls on a photoelectric cell, and when interrupted by the passing of the car, an amplifier in direct connection picks up the interruption and converts it into the activating force that stops one group of watches which record the lap just ended and starts another group to record the next lap. Last lap was four minutes, 30 seconds, 29 one hundred, 44 one hundred, and 48 one hundred. From a low-flying airplane, we realize that Ab is going places, and Art Pillsbury is wondering just how fast he's doing it.
Arrow, what's the average from the last lap? 132.9. What's the average up to this point? 132.2. That's fine. Thanks. The first world's record fall. 200 miles at an average of 132 and 2 tenths miles an hour. Or can this man drive? 200 miles are nothing to him. He seems to be as comfortable as though he were resting in his easy chair. It may be comfortable for him, but it's a little too fast for us. What's this? Are we seeing things? Bab's about to take off. He's actually leaving the ground. Why is his car's dissolving in thin air, rising and rising, until now the car's entirely lifted from the course. This motion picture of a mirage is one of the most interesting scenes ever photographed. Ab, too, sees a few hallucinations and does something about it. To him, the camp seems to be standing in a pond of water, but even mirages can't make Ab veer from his course. Here's a fellow who seems to think more about the inner man than anything else. Now, for that pinch of salt, right under his feet lies a bed of salt 120 miles long and 70 miles wide, and it's said to be 99% pure, too. There goes another record, 500 miles at 132 and 5 tenths miles an hour. Skimming over the salt bed is easy for Ab. The natural ease of this skillful driver enables him to sit at the wheel hour after hour without tiring. Ab never was much of a hand at letter writing, but it looks as if he's taking it up now. Here goes, and somebody hurriedly goes after it. Sure enough, it is a letter, an unsolicited testimonial. If everything holds up as well as the oil, we should worry. On he goes, establishing new records one after another, always turning left around this monotonous course. From the ease with which he drives, one can hardly believe that he's traveling 27 miles an hour faster than the track record at Indianapolis. Look out, he'll run us down. We prefer this view. How's this for service? The car is refueled and inspected in less than two and a half minutes. Everyone has his job to do, and he does it quickly and well, because all of the time in the pit is counted as running time. Time enough to go nearly six miles was lost by even this short stop. The afternoon is nearly ended, and Ab settles down for the long night drive. He's driven nearly seven hours, but the run has only started. He doesn't slacken his terrific pace as night crowds down on him. Flares are lighted, and he continues on into the darkness. The roar of the engine is the only sound to break the desert silence. Another stop, and again the same super service. Everything is carefully checked and inspected. He's off, back on the salt, going farther, faster than any car has ever been driven before. Those flares are 200 feet apart, but the speed almost ties them into a complete circle of light. In the camp, the timers and mechanics never relax one moment during the long night. The roar of the engine and that lone headlight tell them that everything is going smoothly. On the back stretch, the salt is starting to wear into ruts, and the faithful crew goes out to level the course. Ruts don't slow down Ab. He's after new records, and he's going to get them. Here's another. That board is up there nearly every lap now, for record after record is broken during the night. Over the crest of the mountain, the first rays of sunlight slowly appear, and through the cool dawn, Ab speeds along, cheered by his aides in the camp. The sign, breakfast not ready, didn't seem to be so funny to Ab. He was ready to eat. He hasn't had but a little orange juice and a bottle of milk since yesterday noon. On into the morning, he drives like a mad charioteer, faster and faster averaging over 133 miles an hour in these last laps, breaking one record after another. 
stacking up miles at the rate of more than two every minute. Now he's on the last lap, but he doesn't know it. He's still stepping on. He's over the line. The board tells him that he's covered 3,000 miles in 23 and a half hours, averaging 127 miles an hour, half an hour faster than even he thought it could be done. But here he comes, the champion of them all, and he's not even tired. But Ab's more than a demon driver. He's an engineer. Right off the bat, he wants to know just how the oil stood up, and here's how. Just feel this oil. After 3,000 miles of running, boy, can that new Pennzoil take it. I'd rather have a gallon this Pennzoil after 3,000 miles than most any other oil new. So would I, Ab. 